particular one, we must actually uh, praise the emergency team. Mm -hmm. They actually responded well, mm -hmm. meaning there's an improvement mm -hmm. in terms of... And quickly too. Yes, and quickly in terms mm -hmm. of ability to respond. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, we as, you know, people, like the people, how prepared are we to respond, you know, to such emergencies, particularly before the emergency teams, you know, arrive. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that ought to be in place. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's your place of work or, or at home, you know, do you have, you know, certain things like fire extinguisher? Do you know the particular uh, fire extinguisher that you're supposed to use in electrical fire mm -hmm. and what have you? But in this particular instance, uh, my worry is that um, this gas um, uh, station, and particularly the one in Badagri, are actually located in uh, residential areas. Mm. So my question is, how did that happen? How, how come that people are allowed to actually have such very delicate mm. business in a residential mm. area, taking mm. into consideration the consequences when such a... Um, so, uh, yes, uh, when explosions uh, does, does occur. Okay, mm. we're actually talking, before we came on the program, we're talking about orientation of the, of the public. Mm. Um, now, let's um, delve more into that. Do you think the common man, the person that is probably just seated at home, knows the implication of actually this gas explosion uh, okay sorry you wanna mm -hmm. uh, well um apparently bef before you go to the consumer or the person at home I, I think the owners rest with the owner of the business first okay like one of the questions that i asked earlier when we were talking was the fact that the firemen got there on the instance of a call to the fact that gas was leaking mm -hmm. now they try to salvage the situation and while at that if I outbreak started. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the questions they asked was, where is your central valve? And that tells us that because they couldn't locate it on time, because that would have been the first thing, you know, thing for anyone sensible to do, to shut down the gas so that it would not become what it became. It became yeah. So eventually, it shows us that, yes, probably in some certain organizations, people don't go to the orientation of safety management drills. Mm -hmm. When fire starts, where do we go? When this happens, what happens? Mm -hmm. What do you need to shut down? What mm -hmm. kind of facility is on ground to even mm -hmm. start as a first aid to try and tackle the fire in the first place? Yes. So all these issues matter a lot, even with organizations themselves, before we now start thinking mm -hmm. of the general public. Mm -hmm. So for me, it becomes a big problem when we set up organizations and we and our staff don't even know the necessary things involved in running the organization. How do you work in a gas station and you don't know where the central valve well, is? I mean, it, that, that, I mean that's it's, it's so, so dangerous. Unimaginable. And this is, I, I can recall, I must tell you that this is one business I've been eyeing mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. That, hey, maybe one day I might decide to open mine. Okay. Be because, yes, we are moving from an era where people in those days who use kerosene are leaving it and mm -hmm. turning to gas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you know that gas has to get to the citizen, you know, just like back in the days we used to have few churches. Mm. Now churches are everywhere. Mm. Okay, that's the same way gas will grow. Mm -hmm. People will <laughs> leave the era of, yes, having to go to one big gas station, station yeah. mm -hmm. to the sub gas station to yeah. get their gas. In fact, there's door to door you know services Delivery. now yeah you just call a number yeah. and they have your gas delivered that, you right to your doorstep all right so yeah. mm -hmm. that now comes back to okay now we now go back to the consumers themselves just like you said earlier people don't even know that cylinder mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. expiry dates mm -hmm. you know most of us just buy and you see some people we have this culture here in nigeria there is a tokumbo for everything yes and that scares me a lot <laughs> your tire, Tokumbo, your shirt, Tokumbo, your gas cylinder, everything. Guys, Tokumbo, everything. And then, you know, ask yourself, so for instance, where, where did that consumer learn or know that at this juncture, I need to check oh, that this cylinder I'm buying because I want to buy cheap. Mm. It's not expired mm. and it doesn't constitute a danger to me and my family. But then, let's think about it. Buying Tokumbo of anything, is it really cheaper at the end of the day? No, no, to no. me, it's... Well, <laughs> Pennywise, you spend know. Penny, Pennywise, it's, it's not. My, I don't think it is. My, my, then, my yeah. maternal mm -hmm. grandfather used to say that the cheapest is always the dearest. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sadly though, mm -hmm. because of the economic situation we find ourselves yes. in this country over time, you mm -hmm. know, you see people now wanting to go for the cheaper one because you know, at least for the at the, at the main time that you have it. You know, it's giving you the satisfaction that you actually desire. Yes. Not knowing the fundamental implications that will come from it mm -hmm. that will now rub off negatively. Mm -hmm. But back to the issue of what the consumer ought to know. 
um, and indeed businesses. Like he said, you know, most of us don't actually know what we're supposed to know in such places. If Take for instance this building, I don't know who your fire warden is, but you're supposed to have a fire warden. If you go to any building, office complex, if it is one story building, one fire warden. If it is more than that, for each floor, you have a fire warden and the fire warden has an assistant. The, the essence of this is that you're preparing you know, in case of emergency to mm. be able to manage it. Mm. But if you now tell somebody that in a Nigerian environment, the next thing they will tell you is that it is not their portion. Mm -hmm. Reality is that whether it is your portion or not your portion, disaster will come. Okay? Mm. But how, how prepared are you though? It's like how, whether you are a Muslim or a Christian, they say, how are you preparing to go to heaven? How are you preparing for tomorrow in case you die? Therefore, as, as a people, how are we preparing to manage disaster in case it happens? Mm. I'm afraid we are not. Because if you see what has happened so far, it's a clear indication that even government themselves just believe that it is all about having the fire service you know, going to respond. Mm. How am I preventing it from happening? Mm -hmm. What are they supposed to do? For instance, I had said that giving C of O to businesses, you know, to have petrol garages on a very busy residential area mm. is wrong. Mm. Having a gas come uh, a business mm -hmm. in a residential area is wrong. You're mm -hmm. supposed to get permits for all of this. So how did these people get permit permits to not to actually exactly. you know, establish these businesses? Mm. You know, businesses can spring up in Nigeria anytime. Government doesn't care though. All they're interested in is to get their taxes. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So the moment we now begin to ask questions about the consequences of what we do and how we are to respond in terms of negative consequences, the better for us. Mm. Okay, you were talking about uh, more roles that should be assigned to the fire, um, to the fire services. Yes. Yes, yeah, so I yeah, just want the, to shed more light on yeah, that. My, my, argu my argument is this, that fire service should not just be all, be all about waiting, okay. you know, for a call out to go and respond to an emergency. It should equally include, but not limited to, you know, carrying out oversight functions. Take for instance that this, the um, the gas company that you know the uh, fire broke out. Have they been there before to see whether they have certain safety measures in place? Mm -hmm. If they do that, if they have a, a department for enlightenment and campaign and education, those are the kind of responsibilities that such departments should be able to discharge. Mm -hmm. So you go to such offices, you know, such business premises to find out if these uh, 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 things are put in place in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. And if they are not, you give them time basic deadline to implement them mm -hmm. else you sell them lagos state government is the only state in this uh, country that is good at you know uh, uh, what's it called putting businesses on check mm -hmm. and they have ability to seal up businesses that are not meeting up with certain requirements so the the, the fire the firefighting uh, uh, people should have uh, equally have a responsibility okay. you know of carrying out oversight functions to make sure that businesses businesses yeah know, Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Kazim, uh, let's talk about the role of the National Orientation Agency in all of this, in terms of enlightenment campaigns, you know, not just to organizations, even to individuals, you know, on what they should know about <laughs> fire outbreaks. Uh, well, um, based on my experience with uh, most of the things Nigeria has talked about, you know, when we talk about issues concerning our dear nation, Nigeria, mm. the National Orientation Agency is one of those agencies that has failed a whole lot of us. Uh, we keep asking ourselves questions from time to time. What exactly happens to the budget that this so-called agency gets? Don't they ever get anything? And then when they are out there to even do messages, we realize that the messages only resonate with only some certain aspect of the media, yes. whereby they neglect the other parts. Yes. Okay. Uh, the National Orientation Agency is supposed to take certain messages to the population from time to time. Mm -hmm. In the last one year, talk about 2017 alone, we cannot point categorically to say this is that message we so have heard. So any one thing. Yes, exactly. We've done. Yes. Exactly. Even beyond 2017, that, that, for a long that time, I can't remember. That makes us to yeah. ask ourselves mm. if that agency is actually functioning, functioning. at all. Mm. The, the uh, National Emergency Management Agency mm -hmm. are suddenly sort of taking over the role of oh that agency. agency. And so many things are happening in the country today, and we don't see that organization doing anything. Mm. The populace, you know, is seeing this government as the one that is not responsive. So many things have happened in the country today, and uh, I must say, even those who are close to the presidency, it's a shame, don't know how to manage the crisis in terms of not letting the populace feel the pang of some of these happenings. So, I'm sorry, 
if you ask me, like I said the other time, don't go there. <laughs> the National <laughs> Education Agency is not just up to the task. Mm. You know, there, there, there is disappointment uh, from public relations perspective. They are a bad example. Uh, sadly, they see themselves as mouthpiece of you know the government of the day. Uh, they did that during previous administrations, whether it was during Obasanjo's time, Yaradoa, Jonathan, and even now. They see themselves as, just watch, as elections are approaching, they will not start running programs of the president. This is what he has. And that, that's not your responsibility. That's not your primary that's responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. Mm. Your, your aim, the purpose of setting up, you're supposed to enlighten the people, create awareness of certain issues. Mm. But they have failed in that, in that, in that, in that regard. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, I don't, I don't want to say that it's particularly due to having the wrong people, you know, as DG and all that. <laughs> but it is the individual, even if you are put there, you know, the government has appointed, but you, you, you should know that you have a responsibility True. to educate the people. Mm -hmm. When we had Ebola, a Bola crisis here, where were they yeah. to actually educate? Yeah. You don't get it. So it's not a Ministry of Health per se, but national oh, education. And then if, if, even even if we now say okay, that should we, actually be like a grassroots. Yeah, even if we now say we want to reorient, yeah. mm. we, we, we want to reorientate yeah. ourselves mm. on patriotic and nationalistic ethos, where are they to actually churn this out? Okay. Today there is the cry and the actual need for Nigerianness, for me to believe in Nigeria, yeah. mm. for me to see myself not as an Asaba man, but as a Nigerian. For me to see the whether it's a full any man or whatever, not from a uh, man you say it's a full any man and all that. D this education, they are supposed to enlighten us, but they are not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have to move on quickly, but we have to take a music break to allow our third member of panel to join us. And before we do that, uh, let's say kudos to the men of the Lagos State Fire Services and also the Lagos State Emergency Management.